he's a park ranger, and we know that because when we first see him, he's looking at his computer desktop, and it's got the word park ranger tiled all over it as wallpaper. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at my screen now. It just says podcaster, right, podcaster, no, podcaster. <laughs> just to make sure I don't forget what's happening. Do you know how we know that he is um, the bad guy? How's that, Kara? <laughs> Because in the subtitles, it literally says, bad guy, yes. colon, and then it says his <laughs> lie. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because we knew it would kill Pat Robertson eventually. <laughs> I'm your host, Snow <laughs> Christians, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my oo-ooing friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Pat Robertson died. He's yeah, dead. Yeah, is that, isn't that nice? <laughs> He's, He's dead. He's finally all the way melted. Stupid. Now, Eli's on vacation this week. He's celebrating that death, but in his stead, we're happy to welcome <laughs> back the host of the Talk Nerdy podcast, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Yay. <laughs> Come on. She's responding to the movie. <laughs> right, not- family films. Get excited. To be fair. Yeah, this one was like, you guys went easy on me this week, I yeah. feel like. <laughs> it's short and stupid. It's the perfect film. <laughs> right. so true. All right, so Heath, you've already hinted at it, but uh, let's make it official. What will we be breaking down today? We watched In Jesus' Name. They don't have an apostrophe or like a Jesus. They don't know what they're doing with that, but nope. it's In Jesus' Name. It's the right family. It's the story of a Christian couple whose kid, I'm pretty sure, walked in when they had a camera on a tripod and dad was wearing an evil mask and <laughs> using the voice modulator from the kidnapping. <laughs> and they were like, we, they made this whole movie to cover the, the lie that they came up with in that moment, which okay. was they're making a movie as Christian. No, no, that, that's fair. That's fair. And Kara, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Orphan Black but wished it were done with no script on a $100 budget, you will love this movie. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I don't know if they had 100 They did. You think? You guys didn't see it? Oh, they had 100 You didn't see it? It wasn't in your notes. Oh, my God. Spoiler alert. At the very end of the film, the last screen that they put up literally said, this movie was made with no script and a $100 budget. Like, we love Jesus or something weird like that. I, I quoted it at the very end. Oh, wow. Well, I escaped the second that I could from this one. But Okay. They did not stretch that $100 budget very well. This was filmed with a $100 budget and no script. Glory to God. That's what it said. At the Got it. What end. did they spend the $100? Gas? Was it Maybe. gas to get to it the... It was those ribs. Oh, they right. No, the they're right. They did have a lot of ribs. <laughs> so, yeah. So, now, this was apparently the Wright family's first movie. Oh. So, don't expect the kind of mature, sophisticated filmmaking that we got in Badge Bible Bigfoot. This is where they're still <laughs> raw. They're still learning their craft. <laughs> so, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst showing us every single moment of like walking from a car <laughs> to a building and from a building to hallways of buildings. I feel like Ashley and David Wright don't have object permanence. And like, <laughs> okay. Like they were watching right. the rough draft that like an editor made for them on like iMovie and a cut happened to a new scene and they're like, how the fuck did we get there? What are you doing? <laughs> and they like took over the editing and reshot a bunch of walking between every single thing. It is oh. so sweet that you thought they actually had an editor. Right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it was their 10 year old who's like, I know iMovie. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, no, Peter Jackson asked this movie to tone down all the fucking walking. So I, <laughs> I'm going to go with this is such a minor thing, but it's just going to live in my fucking mind forever. Now, best worst stone skipping. Thank you. Okay. I was so <laughs> triggered by this moment. <laughs> Bold statement. I think that David Wright failed at stone skipping harder than we have ever seen a Christian actor fail at anything other than <laughs> acting right? or, or morality. It was so bad. It was so fucking bad. He was like, it was like he was taking a three pointer with a brick. It was amazing. He does so terribly at it and they show it to us. I don't know why they would show it in their movie. And then he tries to gaslight us about <laughs> him having skipped a stone he while totally we watched does. him not. 
<laughs> you can't uh, gaslight a movie audience. We could just hit rewind. <laughs> we, we're watching with our eyes, man. I got it. No, the fuck. Yeah, I think for me, it was literally just best, worst, make it up as we go along. Like I did middle school projects that were more thorough than this. Sure. That had like more of a linear kind of script. It was not good. <laughs> this could have been a shoebox diorama and been a better movie. <laughs> yes. This movie was an argument for why you have to have a script in the first place, right? Yes. Because over and over again, they're just going to like, oh, yeah, no, we'll just improvise a scene here where we're talking about how much we love each other. I love you. Me too. Really? You're going to do it like Curb? You guys, you, the two of you are going to do lot. it like Curb Your Enthusiasm? You're just going to yeah. nail it on the improv? Ugh. It was really validating for me at the very end when I saw that screen because the whole film, I was like, they're just making this up, right? They're just, right, yeah. They're just doing this? <laughs> yes, they are. It was okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I think we all need a minute to prepare before we revisit this trauma. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with all the fidgety camera pans that are in Jesus' name. But without an apostrophe, so not in a possessive <laughs> fury. I don't know what the hell it even means. Hey, podcast listener. The following are verbatim transcripts of text conversations that I've had with my dad in the past two years. How do I change the batteries on my Oculus controllers? Like changing any battery, I guess. Here's a video link. How do I watch the video? How do I text your sister on this thing? You mean the thing you just texted me with? Yes. Why won't my laptop come on? I don't know. Is the battery charged? Uh, I don't think it takes batteries. And even with his boomerian grasp of modern technology, I'm excited to send him an Aura frame for Father's Day this year. It's the Wi-Fi connected digital frame that allows you to put all your photos, including random camera roll pics, in a place where he can actually see them. It's the perfect Father's Day gift. And Aura Frames were named the number one best digital frame by Wirecutter, The Strategist, and Wired, and they're guaranteed to make dad or grandpa smile every single day. And they come with free unlimited storage that allows you to instantly frame photos and videos from any device. You can invite the whole family in on the fun through the free Aura app. You can even preload photos and add a personal video message that'll display as soon as the frame is connected. But best of all, your dad can actually use it no matter how tech savvy he isn't. Aura sent us frames to try and setting them up took all of two minutes. It was so easy and they also look great. Honestly, my sister-in-law didn't even realize she wasn't looking at a photo until the picture changed. And right now, Aura has a great deal for Father's Day. Listeners can save by visiting AuraFrames.com slash awful. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash awful. Use the code awful to get $30 off plus free shipping on their best-selling frames. This deal ends on June 18th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Aura Frames, because mine isn't the only dad who's still pretty sure 3D printing is witchcraft. All right, y'all. Welcome to the first ever writer's room meeting for In Jesus' um, Name. Ma'am, this is a Wendy's. What are you doing? Mister, I paid for this Sprite, and that means I get to use this table as long as I want. <sighs> Whatever. Fine. Praise Jesus. The Lord provides. Like Wendy's provides. I heard that. Anyway, so this movie is going to be a humble family effort to elevate the name of the Lord. We're just going to let God provide and we're going to use our efforts to glorify his name. Praise Jesus. We ain't going to have no big budget or no fancy camera. We don't need them. We won't have no professional actors. You don't need those when you got family. We won't have no cinematographers. Don't even know what that word means. <laughs> we ain't going to have no lighting, no boom mics, no tripods. I Again, I feel like we should have some of that stuff. We ain't going to have no script. I mean, those are free. We ain't going to have no plot, no character development, and no quality. No, none of that. None at all. Um. So what will we have, though? The love of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A anything else? Well, that and however many packets of mayonnaise I can put in my purse before this stingy assistant manager calls the cops on us again. Nice. Get ketchup, too. <laughs> we can make Thousand Island. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> 
Man, we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open things up on a lady walking through a cemetery despite the fact that we're not establishing that anyone died or anything. There's no reason for it. Oh, yeah. We're just going to walk around in a cemetery at the beginning of this. We see it again later for no reason. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Is this just a date spot for the husband and wife? I mean, like, that's cool. I like cemeteries, so. Yeah, sure, this I guess. This is the coolest thing about them now that I think about right, it. Right, yeah, honestly. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so th she's walking through a cemetery. We're getting what I described as funeral warm-up piano. <laughs> <laughs> right, sort of the generic shit that they play as you're walking in. It's like, meh. No, yeah, and chord <laughs> and here and left hand, right hand. It's like me dancing of piano. It's rough. So, okay, for, for those of us who are just joining God Awful Movies for the first time, or those of us who are me, who have forgotten all the things you've said to me in the past, <laughs> could you please explain who the right family is? I have Great no question. fucking idea, but they made a movie once called The Bad, The Bible, and Bigfoot. They sure did. And we couldn't resist that. And then once we saw that, we fell in love with them. But yeah, this is a family that makes these movies on a... I, I, it would be an insult to shoestrings to say shoestring budget, right? Like, I have better shoestrings than this movie. No, they had no budget. But yeah, they make these like... They make like 14 of these movies a year. <gasps> yeah. No. They make so many. They've made a series or two. They've yes, made a bunch TV of movies. Shows. There's one with like a killer bee in Washington, D.C. that we're definitely going to yeah. do at some point. They have a lot. How many have we have you guys covered on, on GAM? I think this is the this third. This is three. Yeah, this is our okay. third. All right. But this is their first movie, so we're, we're mm, going back so to basics. So it's basic extra stuff. bad. Yeah, you're getting them fresh. This is them in like raw talent of their <laughs> cinematic careers. Yeah, yeah, before they sold out, yes. Yeah, they got pretty, pretty, you know, glitzy <laughs> later on. <laughs> So, yeah. So and also, by the way, I didn't know there was a worst headstone in the world until I saw they, they show this one with the cross on it. But it's all diagonal and poking <laughs> out like a kid's book. It's weird. It feels like somebody who was carving it was like, I can't fit the cross unless I go diagonal. And nobody was like, no, you can make it smaller and not diagonal. No, they're like, they're fucking dead. They will know. Right. Yeah, no, it's fair. fine. It's fair. So, yeah, and then this movie was produced, directed by, and starring just this family because they are the only people involved. And the children's names are Scout and Cadence. So yes. millennial. Yeah. Yes. Very, isn't it, though? Scout and Cadence. To Kill a Mockingbird reference and then also Cadence. I, I don't I think don't it's a, a Kill a Mockingbird reference. My friend has a dog named Scout and apparently that's also a car. Interesting. Uh, okay. I All think right. that that's probably what they yeah. were going Named for. after the car. That, that makes sense, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. And a bigoted thing for kids to learn not tying. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I'm not going to give them the Scout Finch benefit of the doubt here. <laughs> I'm not. Also, so wait a minute. So, like, I have to point this out. And there's a point, because we're just establishing her walking down a fucking cemetery or whatever. There's a point where she, like, leans over and tries to, like, catch some leaves as they're flying by. She thinks, oh, you know what would be playful? Wait, that doesn't work. That's not a thing that people do. I see why now, right? Like it was a snowflake. Like she might as well have like got down on the ground and tried to like with her tongue catch a blowing <laughs> leaf along the ground. I was like, is it, she a child now? We can't blame her. Like, to be fair, this movie, nothing happens right. in this movie. <laughs> like, he's just <laughs> rolling. Because you also, you'll you'll realize as we unfold that each scene, if there's only one, two, or three people, the fourth person is holding the iPhone. Yes. But if all four people are in the scene, <laughs> the iPhone is propped up on a table. IPhone. This is very, very it's clear. An, yeah. It's not an iPhone iPhone. So at this point, she's just, you know, the husband is just going like, do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yes. Not that, not that. That's crazy. Get back up. Don't do that, though. We're keeping it, but don't. don't. But eventually the husband meets her in the cemetery and, and as Kara has already alluded to, we only see one of them at a time. You know? <laughs> we shot, see a shot of him saying, hey, hon, and then a separate shot of her saying, hey, bye, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's insane. They're like, hello, we've arrived. Okay, let's both leave for the yeah. next scene. Cool. Right. I get no reason go. for the scene. No, he's like, he's like, I knew I'd find you here in the <laughs> cemetery. What? Okay. <laughs> also, I, we have to point this out because there's a, a moment where they're walking away. I guess they got one of the kids to hold the, the camera for this one. But they're walking away and the, 
very clearly they've got like one lapel mic on him and she's trying to kind of lean over and speak <laughs> into it. <laughs> the audio in this is so bad. Oh, it's great. So, okay. So then we cut from there just and and don't ever expect the transitions to make sense in this movie, right? Like if you expect that, you're just going to be disappointed. We cut from there to dad stopping by. He's got the two daughters in the car. He's stopping by the Home Depot to get mom a Valentine's Day <laughs> present. Okay, that, come on. If you, you've seen this man's physical appearance, that tracks perfectly. Oh, yeah. That? No, I was like, I bet it's going to say live, laugh, love on it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice little Saturday. Going to yeah. Home Depot, get a Valentine's Some Day. Some romantic yeah. pickups. If I yeah. want a Valentine's Day present for my wife at Home Depot, I'd have to add a shovel so she could bury me with it when I got home. To be fair, he does probably pick the best thing you could get somebody from Home Depot. It's sad. Yeah. Right. No, if, if there was like an assignment in a reality show to find the most romantic thing at the Home Depot, he, yeah, he found it. an orchid. <laughs> yeah, like, an I orchid. want an orchid. Yeah. I don't care where it's from. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Do you so have you guys been watching Barry? That's a great show. I haven't seen the la I've, I've seen the first couple of seasons. Oh no, but you haven't been seeing the final season. Mm -mm, no. Okay, so I mean no spoilers here, but in the final season, they are in like Witsec, like they're in witness protection mm -hmm. and their their family is it I feel like the rights, although this is probably older <laughs> like or maybe the writers of Barry like saw this film yeah, right. somehow no, I'm and sure were like, they were inspired let's by... make them like this family yeah Barry <laughs> the, the final season I read in an article that it's an homage to the right family <laughs> <laughs> that's what Hater said also and I I have to point this out because like there's not much going on in this movie. So I have to point everything out between them pulling up at the Home Depot and them walking into the Home Depot. There's like a 49 second cut of just mom sitting at home reading the Bible. Yeah, like wrapped in an Afghan. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Seriously, they read in the movie for I count it's 22 Full seconds of Jesus silence. Jesus Christ. She doesn't even move. Well, it's not quite silence because you can like hear the air conditioner. Right. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so bad. And I'm so glad that there are subtitles because as we have established that they just fully forgot to hire a sound designer or editor yeah, no, or like they don't know what any, anyone. Um, but the subtitles are classic. So I will periodically be pointing out what the subtitles say. Well, you know, the, the movie is missing an apostrophe in its title, so I wasn't right. expecting yeah. much out of them. Okay, and he picks out an orchid here that has, like, the plastic around it, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure they put the lapel mic on the plastic wrap <laughs> oh my God. for that to happen. It oh, was yeah, the, so aggressively The loud. subtitle says, parenthesis, crinkling plastic. <laughs> 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 It was like, it's like every time you've ever tried to open a bag in a silent room, it was that yes. plastic somehow. Yeah. So, okay. So we cut back home. Mom's still reading her Bible. Dad shows up with his little droopy fucking Charlie Brown orchid for her. <laughs> right. Oh, and he's like, I'm going to get ready for our big date that's going to happen off camera. She's like, I will play the guitar and sing. For no reason. <laughs> so we... We just get like a two minute musical number from Ashley Wright. Yeah, she is. She's a, a polymath and an <laughs> artiste of all types. Oh, yes. Yeah. Her own clearly written. She wrote it bio on IMDb is like <laughs> director, writer, dancer, artiste of all types, went to the moon, invented the bag. And like <laughs> she's like, I will play guitar now. I'm amazing at it. And she's next to her as she's playing like mediocre guitar there's a bible and a capo right next to her and I was like this is the perfect fucking metaphor for every Christian movie we've ever seen <laughs> My favorite part of the scene is that like we can't just watch her play guitar for the whole song right so we cut away to dad like rummaging through his weird closet to pick out one of seven button down shirts mm -hmm. and then he puts on his button down <laughs> shirt and comes downstairs and he's like, okay, I'm ready. You ready? And she's like, yeah, let me just grab my shoes. So he gets ready and she wears an Afghan. I, I <laughs> thought that was weird. I thought that was a throw that was supposed to stay on the couch. I, yeah. <laughs> like what? 
I just love he comes down and his fancy does that one button down that comes all the way down to his belt. Yeah. <laughs> so and they, they go out to eat and we're like, oh, OK, so we're going to get a scene of them going on a date. Nope. No, we're going to cut straight from there to them laying in bed together. The bed is comically small. And that's by the way, it's a literal cut from that. Are you ready to go? Let me grab my shoes in bed. Yes. Like there's nothing in between. <laughs> It's so sad. It's again, it's a perfect metaphor. It's like, we're going to go on an awesome date, bed together, no space, sweating against each other's fat, just hating it. Fully dressed. Honey, I found they're, they're literally both reading the Bible, yes, separate copies yes. of the Bible side by side. And one's like, I found another Bible verse that we can talk about instead of having sex together because we don't really <laughs> like each other anymore. And marriage is probably a big mistake between the two of us. But we're not allowed to divorce because of the culture. <laughs> and to your point, Noah, like comically small bed. I, I The whole time I was like, oh, it's like relativity. Like, is this a twin size bed or is he just an enormous oh, man? Oh, like, I can't tell. <laughs> no, you're right. It's both. Yeah, because they were tiny. shoulder to shoulder, and their shoulders were like like dripping off the sides of their bed. And then I was thinking, <laughs> they don't have a budget. This is just their actual bed. Right, that they're that's the in. sad thing. They sleep like correct. subway commuters. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. I I hated everything in the room. The size of the bed most, but there's also a giant plaque that says "Amazing Grace" <laughs> yes. on it. It's taking up the entire side table. Yep. There's only one side table in this room because you can't fit another one on the other side of this tiny bed in this tiny room. And there's a triptych painting on the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> A toddler maid. I bet you a million dollars that is an Ashley Wright original. I bet you a million dollars she painted that. Yeah. Also, what's on the one side table? A comically large bottle of hand lotion. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. I got excited about that. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, but she was just. That's honest. They're just, they're just putting it right there. They use that sometimes. No. And then she put it on her hands. And, and we're it going was like, like All right, a okay. whole part of the scene for no reason yep. <laughs> was her taking this bottle of hand lotion and like, mechanically squirting it into her hands. It's like they were trying to establish like this is not here for sex stuff. It's for hands. It's hand <laughs> lotion. Yeah. So and then he said this is their pillow talk. This is amazing. He says to her and again, this is not scripted. This is just them improvising pillow talk. He says, God's been putting it on my heart to spend more time with you and not so much time at work. <laughs> <laughs> And she goes, that was a fancy dinner we had with lobster ravioli. Oh, and I'm like, oh, y'all went to the Olive Garden. <laughs> fancy eating. Don't fucking hate on the Olive Garden. <laughs> you gotta love that salad. I ate at the Olive Garden yesterday. So yeah, I can't oh, really good, okay. too much. <laughs> We're the same. <laughs> so, and then, and then he reads the, um, but God has numbered every hair on your head passage and he's bald. That's funny. Hilarious. <laughs> It's so funny. She even goes, she goes, you still have, and then you can, all, she almost says dot, dot, dot. She does not finish the <laughs> sentence because she looks up and she's like, no, nah, that's, they can tell he doesn't have any. She has to stop. She's like, I can see, nope, uh, <laughs> pores, I can see pores on your stupid bald face. Yeah, she used the word pores. Yes. She didn't say like, fall, like hair follicles. She said, but you've got Pores. I'm like, what are they talking about? What is hap What is this movie? They're, and this is them going like, fuck, improv's a lot harder than Curve made it look. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> pretty, pretty. No, you're just doing Larry David now. That's nothing. That has nothing to do with our scene. I'd much rather watch that. <laughs> She's like, God sure has rescued us a lot. And he's like, yep, he never forsakes us through the entire movie. And that's the end of the scene. <laughs> oh, God. And then they do the sad couple thing of like, all right, go to sleep on three. One, two, three, three. <laughs> no sex. <laughs> Ew. So I don't want to see them have sex. Well, that's true. Yeah, right. Like We were saved for a lot. So now it's it's the next day. The whole family's going to go out to the park. Well, dad has a surprise for them. They don't know that they're going to the park yet, right? God, and he's wearing a fucking Red Sox hat just he to is? make things a he little is. bit worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, and by and of course, they have to use separate shots for 
Ashley and the daughters leaving than they used for him leaving because who would hold the fucking camera if they all four walked out? Ashley, that doesn't even make sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now we have to meet the movie's villain, right? And he's a park ranger. And we know that because when we first see him, he's looking at his computer desktop and it's got the word park ranger tiled all over it as wallpaper. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at my screen now. It just says podcaster, right, podcaster, no, podcaster. <laughs> just to make sure I don't forget what's happening. Do, do you know how we know that he is um, the bad guy? How is that, Kara? <laughs> <laughs> because in the subtitles, it literally says bad guy, yes. colon, and then it says his <laughs> line. <laughs> okay, but also he has the voice modulator yes. thing. So... Because it's fucking David Wright right. doing uh, this clearly. other character and he like couldn't do any kind of slightly different voice. Any other voice would have been fine. But they were like, no, we're going to have to use the thing. So it's him just on a call being like, yeah, I know. Yes, I'm going to look. It says park ranger, park ranger, park ranger. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, he's talking to a kidnapper. But no, he's the bad guy. We're getting the voice modulator on the side we're watching just because right. they couldn't come up with any other voice. Do you think maybe Ashley Wright just thinks that's what kidnappers sound like, that she doesn't realize they're using a machine? A hundred percent. So, A hundred percent. There's no question. So like the, the the other kidnappers, when he calls them later, are like a deeper voice yeah, in her right, head, exactly. like as you go Even, up the chain of command. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, no, yeah, it's literally like the kid using a voice modulator versus David Wright using the right, voice modulator. Yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> so yeah, but so he's talking to his kidnapping partners. Apparently he's part of a kidnapping ring and they're like, hey, we need more kidnapped girls. And he's like, all right, I, I'm on that. You're giving it way too much credit, by the way. None of those things actually happen. No, you, you figure that someone. out in retrospect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like this is my big. This is my biggest problem with this film. Come the fuck on! <laughs> but like, one of the things that infuriates me about this film is there is no reason for the entire kidnapping like subplot. Nope. Like, it's not developed at all. What is the purpose? People don't just kidnap for kidnap's sake. Qui bono. Thank He's, you. <laughs> <laughs> so also, the, here's my biggest problem with the entire fucking movie, though, is that at the end of this scene, David Wright picks up a very real handgun and, you know, like does some handgun stuff with it to just so we establish that the bad guy's got a gun. But that means that, like, this family is just allowed to own firearms. And that reminder scares the shit out of me. This family is 100% owns lots of firearms. Oh, yeah. yeah that is not, not a one. question in my mind. They're allowed to vote. Yeah. And yep. drive. Yeah. They do all the things. We also, because we have to get some of Heath's best worst. So he leaves. He has to walk from his office to his park ranger truck. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's in a hoodie that obscures the fact that he's obviously David Wright. And by the way, we should point out that David Wright is not a normally shaped human, right? <laughs> he's this enormous guy with gigantic fucking biceps and he's perfectly round somehow. So it's like obvious in a hoodie that it's him. <laughs> And he has a huge bushy beard, so they had to put yes. like a weird black half like face mask thing yes. over him yep. and sunglasses like the Unabomber. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys noticed. I mean, how could you not? Like he walks for ninety nine percent of this film, but he's like sort of got a limp too. Yeah, so yeah. The bad guy and the good guy have like the same gait, the same distinctive <laughs> limp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what if we flip the screen? Left leg limp, right leg oh, limp. Oh, there you go. Better. Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah, they just show him walking to his, you know, Jeep, the, the park ranger Jeep. I thought it was going to say park ranger all over the Jeep. <laughs> just one. Well, what I love is you you got to imagine they probably just drove around that park all goddamn day waiting to find a parked park ranger truck that he could walk up to for the purposes of <laughs> oh. this shot. <laughs> That's how every, like, yes, we will see this multiple times. Yeah, yeah. there's a it's shot where he's wait. talking to a cop and you're just like, they just stopped and asked that man for directions. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every one of these scenes ends with, okay, get out of here. Get the, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so they're driving to the park together. The family is, and we are going to be treated along the way to the least artful montage of nature shots in history. These could have been chosen at random, right? <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were. Right, yeah, no, honestly. <laughs> but eventually, though, Ashley runs out of piano improv, so they arrive at the hiking trail. 
Mm -hmm. There's this amazing moment at the map. They all walk up to the hiking map and Ashley says, the mom says, what trail should we take today? And then nobody responds for a really long time. So eventually she just answers her own question. It's the best because they're all, they don't, they don't have a script. They're right? all like, yes, I'm not sure how we visually decide how we hide. Panic. <laughs> On the line map cut. And that's they they're like, yeah, we'll hike. We'll hike there. Yeah. In the thing. That in one. the woods. That one. Okay. And here's something else that drives me fucking bonkers about this. This is a family of four. The two daughters are, what would you say, like nine and eleven? Yeah. Something, something like that, yeah. Something like that. So a, a father, a mother, and a nine and eleven year old daughter, sort of dressed appropriately. It does look much colder outside than how they are dressed, but okay, mm. we'll let that go. They don't have anything on their person, not even a single bottle of water. No, no, no <laughs> pay pack, no first aid kit, the no least nothing. responsible family of all time. I take a bottle of water with me when I walk down the road to the yes. store. <laughs> like, I, can't, I don't understand. All right, as a person that's basically never more than like eight feet away from his first aid kit, that really <laughs> triggered the shit out of right. me. Right. Oy, bad father, bad father. I think they're father. survivalists. They live off the land. Oh, they just have like go. a little yeah. dropper of iodine to get water out of any source. <laughs> they're fine. So it's, explain to me how that works. <laughs> I think you could put iodine in like stream water and it's fine. There is <laughs> there is an iodine solution you could use for that. Yes. Okay. That is real. I didn't I completely didn't. make that up. I thought for a second, I was like, shit, Kara's telling me that I just made that up. <laughs> she probably does know. The way you worded it, it's like you could just drop <laughs> iodine on a yeah, rock no, it's and it like would that. make water. <laughs> You can conjure water from a rock and iodine, Kara. Noah just confirmed. So, and then, okay, so we just had this you long- You did 9-11. <laughs> right, it was what? weird that you picked 9 and 11 for the kids' ages, right? Like, Thank that was you. a bit of a tell. I didn't want to say anything. Right, Wait, by yeah. the way, guys, by the way, guys, I have so many five-star reviews. On my I right saw now. that. They all say that I did 9-11. I They're saw so that. Good ones. One of them was like, Jet Fuel can't burn this book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> or did you? So then, okay, so on the way to the trail, we got this long piano montage of nature shots. Once they get on the trail, we're going to get a long guitar solo montage of nature shots. Totally different. And then at the end of this, dad's going to show his daughters how to skip stones. Yeah, I, I wrote my notes here. Like, didn't we already watch this scene? I feel like... <laughs> through most of this film because the way that we write our notes is there are these like almost chapter markers, right? Like mm -hmm. walks left or like, hey, what are you doing over there? Like a, a piece of dialogue. But this one was really tough for me to know where we were in the movie at any given time. Yeah. Because every scene was the same. Right, because there are two consecutive different scenes where they throw rocks by a goddamn river <laughs> while on a trail together as yeah. a family. Like They don't know either, Kara. <laughs> they have no idea. It's so bizarre. They they figured out we'll we'll go hiking there, and then there was a cut, and then you see them walking back to their car, and then being like, "Nope, we said we were hiking." Cut again. <laughs> yes. Walk into the woods where hiking is. The editing and now that's what so they're doing. baffling here and there. But I have to talk about so so he's like, "Let me show you." I used to be a champion stone skipper. Now again, there's no script. They could do whatever they want. If he doesn't know how to skip stones, it's okay. <laughs> No one has yeah, challenged him to skip a stone. He skipped. Like if we asked Eli to skip a fucking stone, I'm willing to bet real money that he would do better than David Wright managed in this moment. This went worse. He was just like, I'm going to skip my eye. I don't know how I did it. I threw a stone in my eye. Like he doesn't, right away. Even, he doesn't even aim down. Right, like that's what, like that's he lobs a rock. He does. It's like he's trying to hit a three pointer or something. And he's like, "Well, that didn't work." And the little girl's going, "It's real hard." I'm like, "It's not though. It really is. It's just no, when you don't children know what the do this all the time." You're doing. Yeah, and then he gaslights us in the movie. Yeah, he throws a lob shot with a rock. It plunks into the water. We're watching this happen, yes. Yes. and he goes, "Bam!" Almost had it, and we're like, "What the fuck? What do did you mean? Almost mean there? It, it hit the water." I mean, and yeah, it, you you did contact the water, I suppose. So you got one skip. Really, that's zero, man. Though it starts at zero in this game. 
this is, this is a computer science situation. And then he does another lob and he's like, nice, got it. Yes. And again, we're watching. No, you didn't. No. No, you didn't. I had in my notes in all caps, no, the fuck you didn't. We watched it on video. <laughs> I was furious. <laughs> Hey, you guys use a lot of all caps in this. Yeah, this, this <laughs> fair, fair. So okay, so and then we watched his kids find shells by the river for like a while, right? <laughs> and then he, we we cut to a separate scene. This is a different scene of the family by a different river throwing different rocks at different target. <laughs> He's like, hey, kids, gather around. I'm going to foreshadow. I mean, show you how to throw rocks and establish that I'm very good at it for later. Right? <laughs> Just like David and Goliath. Yeah, because this is a Christian movie. <sighs> <laughs> oh, is this right after this is when the kids were like, hey, look at that flimsy ice lake. Can we jump up and down on it? <laughs> and dad's like, let me check it out. And looks at it for one second and goes, seems fine. For Visually. Me. Yeah. He checks <laughs> like, it out like visually from a distance. Yeah, that looks like that's pretty solid. And then he's like, yes, nine and 11 year old daughters, go out on that ice flow. It'll be great. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So stupid. If you don't die of dehydration, let's die of hypothermia. <laughs> well, right, because that we got to be super clear on this because then they do. <laughs> Right, yeah. like in real life, they really yeah, do. They and do. again, like if you want to play on ice, you're, the the thing that you're supposed to do is actually break it open and measure it. You know, measure <laughs> the thickness of it. He doesn't do anything like that. He doesn't even do the old like throw a big heavy rock out there and see if it breaks through. He just walks up, looks at the ice, and he's like, "Yeah, it's pretty wet." And like he's a big guy. Why doesn't he try stepping on it first? Sure, you know. Like, sure. like, you know, yeah, if it holds me, sending it will hold his kids them, but... out to be canaries in a cold. <laughs> right. <laughs> hold on. I could skip a rock on ice a bit. Let me, let me try. <laughs> I don't know that he could. That's water. It counts. <laughs> so, so yeah. So the daughters go out and play on the ice. And by the way, we can hear from their footfalls that no, this is not safe. Right? No, it's like crackling under their feet. No. And we know that because the audio is so bad. I, I was terrified. I fell through the ice when I was a kid playing hockey <gasps> on the pond. Uh -huh. and oh, that's so scary. Yeah, really, really scary. And this is <laughs> happening. And I was like, they're about to fall through. This movie, I'm not going to be surprised if these kids fall through and they keep it because they don't know the stop button and they <laughs> get them out. And then they do another scene. It was so scary. And again, he doesn't have like a chisel. He doesn't have like a, a, a an icebreaker or anything there. He doesn't have a fucking rope. He doesn't have a bottle of water. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you. It's nothing. He's not even wearing the right shoes. I can't. But of course, the whole time, hooded park ranger is also limping through the woods. And by the whole time, you mean one, like one second. Yep. Yes, we jump. see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, right. what? Oh, is that? Stuff's going to happen. <laughs> and he's wearing a hoodie for a Jesus Christ themed weightlifting club. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote down what it says at one point. Yeah, it says no pain, no gain on it. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a no fear shirt. <laughs> right. Yeah, raise your hand yeah. if you're surprised this man owns a fucking Christian themed no pain, no gain weightlifting shirt, right? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so, okay. So then they take their kids to the part of the park with the like, you know, swings and shit like that on it, right? We watched that. I would have expected more if I was watching their home fucking movies, but this is a home movie. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah. Is. That's true. Again, there's no script. I love this moment, though. They told these two kids, like, Okay, just improvise that you're excited to go into the playground. And they the kids go like way too aggressively yes. hard. Oh, yeah. like, Let's go on the fucking seesaw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're like, all right, just cut right, come come down, relax, careful. There's with your body. And dad's like, dad's like, be careful over there by that engineered swing set. We wouldn't right. want you to get hurt on the built <laughs> playground. Right. He did say a goddamn thing where they were sliding around on thin fucking ice. They go up to the seesaw. He's like, careful, girls. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so and then there's this also this moment where the girls are running around and he's like going to try to improvise having fun with the kids. He's like, oh, I'm going to get you, get you, get you like you would with oh, a three year old. So fucking creepy, especially when he does it POV. He starts get you, get you, get you the camera. And I'm like, I don't want you to fucking get me, man. You do not have my affirmative <laughs> consent for this. No, <laughs> no. There's also a great moment here where they're trying to play around and he knocks his wife the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He goes to grab her. She falls into an impromptu split, and he almost says, like, not just in the movie, I'm for real sorry, honey. <laughs> so- <laughs> she fell way too hard, and they, like, turned off the mic for her being like, fuck. <laughs> a lot of skin got pulled up. It's like a big flap of skin. <laughs> they do that a few times in this movie. If you're watching really closely, like the audio will cut and you'll see their mouths moving. Yes. And yes. it's like, we didn't want whatever they just said yep. to be on camera. Yep. So, many. <laughs> so and, and then it starts to rain. So we watch them hide under a shelter. We are 18 minutes into a 60 minute movie at this point, by the way. Oh, right. It felt like we'd been watching for an hour already. Oh my god! So yeah, so they go to hide under the under the shelter. We cut to Hoodie Creeper, and he's walking into the ladies' room. Yeah, is this like a trans bathroom commentary? I feel or it's, like it's not that it clever. is. It was. I but so at the very least, I feel like in their minds, like the place that women are in most danger is public restrooms, right? Like there's at least some of that echoing in this. Or like the place where women are in most dangerous places where men aren't allowed. Uh, right, you know? yeah. Because like yeah. we need men to keep us safe. Right. This yeah. evil guy might as well be like, good thing there's no armed guard checking for a uterus right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can get into any bathroom I Sneak want in. today. Yeah. So he goes and he hides in there. And then we we watch the family wait out this rainstorm. This is my favorite like failed improvisational moment. Right. Because these two are supposed to just <laughs> bamp a dialogue between them about how much they love each other. He goes like, I love you no matter the weather, rain, snow. And then he runs out. Right. He kind of panics. <laughs> but what's another gloom of night? I don't know another. <laughs> and they, they try to go. She tries to rescue him. Yes, and she's like, you she said doesn't. snow, rain, rain, shine, shine, shoes, shine, <laughs> shoes. Feet. Tennis, tennis shoes, happy feet, <laughs> penguin, the penguin, the riddler, riddles, shit. <laughs> God, and literally, we're watching a rain delay in a movie. That's yes. why we have to watch it. Because they put a rain delay in their movie. They're filming rain, and she goes, Rain is a blessing. I just, <laughs> I, after that, I wrote my notes like, you know, you can just end the scene wherever you want, right? You don't no, know. because it took them forever to prop their iPhone up so all four of them could be. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. They'd damned if they were going to waste that shot. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, well, I guess we better leave. The rain's not letting up. And, and mom's like, all right, but I have to go to the, to the bathroom before we go. Mm-hmm. You know, da, da, da. <laughs> so her and one of the daughters go into the restroom. The abductor guy sneaks in behind her and grabs her. She yells, go away. <laughs> I don't I don't know that I would do better mid abduction. But... <laughs> go away now, abductor. That's weird what I said. Uh, you... <laughs> go, Leave go out, me now. Go out what? and come back in. I want to try again. <laughs> so. My favorite is that he like straight up bludgeons her uh-huh. at this point, kind kind of off camera, but like still you can yeah. see that he's like beating her, grabs her, puts her in the truck, drives pretty far down the road, and then the daughter opens the bathroom stall and she's like, Mom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> was she like, was she having like a, a seizure in there before? Like she just has no idea what's going on. Mom was yelling loudly, yeah. go away. Right. <laughs> Do not kidnap me. And we have to point out, right, like that there's no one else anywhere near them in this park, right? So if he had a truck, they'd have seen the truck outside, right? Like, Mom, are you yelling for me to go away? It was weird what you said. <laughs> so you were, yeah, you didn't- he takes her in a truck away and the whole time they've established this because, of course, we have to see it, do it, say it, see it again. Uh-huh. We see dad watching the bathroom like yes. a hawk. How did he not see this happening? Did this guy sneak out a fucking window? What <laughs> happened here? Oh, no. And then, well, maybe it's just the dad is so stupid. He's just like, oh, I wonder that why that guy's carrying that lady that looks like my wife out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. That guy looks like me. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, that's probably me. It's probably <laughs> So then the daughter runs out and she's like, Dad, mom's been kidnapped. So he runs into the bathroom to check. <laughs> She's like, mom got put in a truck. And he's like, let's make sure of her. Oh, yeah. Right. The only place <laughs> we know that she isn't is this bathroom, man. No, Dad, she got taken from there. The under, you know from and to, right? So anywhere else is better. <laughs> 
All right. So I got, you know what? A thing happened. God damn it. That means we can take a break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more in Jesus name. Avo T, get your Avo T right here, fresh hey, Avo T. Hey Heath, what what are you doing? Oh, I'm obviously I'm selling avocado toast on the street. Avo T, just trying to make some extra guap, you know. Stop, please stop talking like you're not a middle aged white guy. No can do, Noah. No can do. It's all the inflation at the gas pump, the grocery store, utility bills, streaming services. Inflation is everywhere. So I read this article that said if I stop eating all the Avo T and I make my coffee at home, I will be wealthy soon. And I figured, okay, great. Let me ramp that up. I'll make the Avo tea at home too, and I'll sell it. And and you have the skateboard so that you like, like seem like a millennial? I am a millennial. Technically, it's I'm on the edge. He, I am he, just a zennial. I'm a if, if millennial. If you're looking to save money, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? Oh, what's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile is the first company to sell premium wireless service online only. They let you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting from just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. With all the inflation, thankfully, Mint Mobile is the one company out there that's giving you a much-needed break. That sounds great. So how do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash G-A-M. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. But I guess I might as well sell the rest of my stock here. So Avo T, a totes. I got a totes. Kickflip, also a skateboard. Kick oh, oh. oh. Mm. you hurt yourself. Yeah, yep, that's blood. Oh, that's blood. Avo tea, though. Avo tea. Excuse me, miss. Miss, Avo tea. You want some Avo tea? Yeah, you look like you forgot to have a midlife crisis 10 years ago. Yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. That's about right. But yeah, give me an Avo tea. Nice. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's agreed. You kidnap the women and then we'll buy them for 100 grand each. Exactly. So how are you going to get them? What's your plan? Okay, well, first, I'm going to hide in a women's bathroom at the state park that I work at. A public restroom in a state park in eastern Oregon? Yes, that's right. I feel like those bathrooms are going to go whole days without seeing a visitor. Well, especially this mm. time of year. I mean, we've already established that it's February in this. In this uh... Exactly. So there'll be nobody there to hear the, the victims scream. So, ha, 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 ha. But we'll got him to hear who screamed though. The the victim, the victims obviously. Well, right, but 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 if there's nobody there, yeah, yeah. Okay, so wait. So assuming you do find a victim, mm -hmm. where are you going to stash her until we can come get her? Oh yeah, that's the best part. I actually have a torture barn at the park with like bars in the windows and everything, like right here at the park. I, I'm sorry, the park where you're going to kidnap them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, super convenient location. Got it right here. Yeah, but won't that be the exact place the cops are looking? It's, uh, is, is it a big park? I think it's fine. See, I feel like keeping a torture prison at your workplace is going to be problematic even when you're not actively kidnapping, no? Uh, it's on a trail that nobody really uses. Wait, so uh, it's on a trail? Uh, well, it's more of a path, really. It's a path, I would say. I just, Those are wrong words. synonyms. Pretty much, yeah, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. You are a bad kidnapper. You sound exactly like my mom. <laughs> it's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with dad springing uselessly into action in this effort to like unkidnap his wife here. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he says like, you know, where did he go? What did he look like? And the, and the daughter's like, I was in the stall the entire time for like several minutes afterwards. Yeah. Actually, I didn't see anything. He's like, well, let's drive very fast anyway. We'll race in a direction and then they just go somewhere. They look yeah. anywhere. She's like, I looked down under the stall. It was weird. He's wearing the same shoes as you. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rain. Also, I don't want to pick on the kids because these poor kids obviously got roped into this against their will here to some degree. But the one kid goes for a fake cry here. Oh, it's so bad. Ooh. Ooh. 
Whoa, it's real bad. It's 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 almost like she only got one cry and they had to put it on a loop or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's driving along. One one kid's fake crying. The other kid's praying to God to protect mommy. Please, God, protect mommy. Starting now, I guess. I should have so really far, gotten to you it's earlier. Crazy about this. the plan that you have as a god now, because <laughs> she's been kidnapped. Right. By maybe my dad. He's here too. I don't know yeah. what's happening. And dad is also praying. He's like, he's like, I, you know, God, show me where she is. Like he's going to highlight her on the map or whatever. Spoiler, he is. He is going to do that. <laughs> I'm, but I'm, I'm glad they gave us two full minutes of him driving around aimlessly, or I'd have assumed that they gave up pretty quick. But eventually, and by the way, we, we don't see him call the cops here right away. We don't see him use a cell phone. Right. We what? don't know if he has a cell phone. But later in the movie, at the end, he opens up a cell phone and makes a call. Because, <laughs> like, my my thought here was, like, is this really legitimately a moment of, like, how can he call her on the cell phone if we're filming with the cell phone? But no, because the <laughs> daughter also has a cell phone. They could have had him have a cell phone. Come on, man. Zach Morris in 1993 could call the cops right now. This is yes. 2019. Yeah. yeah, there are no, there's no reference. There is no, like... This movie has so much time for a scene that nobody thought, because the movie is just them walking and driving. Really? 95% of the movie. That nobody thought to maybe just pick up the phone and go, oh, no signal and throw it back down again. Right, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> like, that done. That's all it would have taken. Yeah. Yep. And then in some <laughs> baffling editing, even by the standards of this movie. This is so good. <laughs> he runs into the park ranger's office. No, he doesn't. He actually uses an emergency phone he saw. on. So the movie's in an argument with itself about where he is. It's crazy. Right? It like cuts to him running out of his truck somewhere and then cuts back to him running out of his truck again. Yes, but in a different <laughs> like, place. I don't understand. In real life, I'm pretty sure he like got out of his truck, ran into that building and was like, my wife got kidnapped in a movie we're making. Can I use your phone? And they were like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, cut. Use a different Found a phone <laughs> elsewhere now and he's on a pay phone. Yes. Like every... Every cut in this movie feels like there's a record needle in the camera they're using somehow. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, but he calls the cops from this payphone. <laughs> there's a, uh, we, we get the cop's voice, which of course the, it's David Wright. He's the only <laughs> actor in the movie, only male voice in the film. So it's him doing his, uh, one of his accents, one of his voices. Right, because <laughs> no way it could be a female cop. They didn't even know. No, think they, could, they didn't. <laughs> Sorry, a what? <laughs> a woman? A who? The doctor's a woman? I don't even understand the words you just... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the, the, the detective that he talks to, right? Because there's only one cop the whole movie, and for some reason he's a detective. Mm -hmm. And he is so... He has the weirdest voice. He puts on the... Because it's not a voice modulator for the cop, right? No, uh, uh It's just like this really, really bad... Him doing his voice when it goes like this. Yeah, yeah this he's, like, right he's like, I'm from Brooklyn or something. I don't know what he's going for, but it's very bad. Well, at first he's from Brooklyn, but later it's Arkansas. It, it's <laughs> not super consistent. He's the warden from Cool Hand Luke later. It moves yeah. all around. <laughs> so... Yeah, but so the cops are coming. So we see him leaving the park ranger's office slash still waiting there by the phone for the cops. No goddamn idea. We also, we cut to the creeper carrying an unconscious Ashley, right? <laughs> He's carrying her to wherever he keeps his kidnapped girls. Yes, and she's like all droopy in his arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you, like well, she did her best to be droopy, but clearly he was like holding her shittily. <laughs> and she was like, ow, fuck. And like moves a couple times and he's like, stop moving, you're unconscious. <laughs> 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 it's so good. And there's, this is my favorite because there's this scene where he's just sitting on a park bench. I guess, like, is he waiting for the cops? I guess, yeah. Uh -huh. So he's just sitting on a park bench, like, interminably like for minutes and minutes and minutes and the whole time I'm like where are his fucking children like right. there are <laughs> so many scenes from here on out where his children would he just leave them 
in an unlocked car. Like your wife just got kidnapped. Wouldn't There's you be like holding onto your part. children as yes. tightly as you can? <laughs> Thank like, you. So he's like, kids, go play. I'm going to go find your mom. Just pan over. The kidnapper pulls up behind the car, grabs the two kids. <laughs> so insane. It's like he forgot he had kids. Clearly. It's so crazy. Yeah. No, instead of worrying about his kids, he's having like sepia tone flashbacks to earlier in the movie where he loved her. <laughs> so, and then we get the scene. We get the scene where he's talking to the cop. Where clearly they just are harassing some poor security guard that works at that park or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're filming it like incognito. They're like on a hill, or yes, something, right. like from above. <laughs> <laughs> so, shot from a grassy knoll. One hundred. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's and they also I like unless they're suggesting that the river was in on the kidnapping. I don't know why this <laughs> river shot was in here for so long. You say it like it's a singular shot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this river shot. Oh, okay. No, you're right. You're right. No, we got it from a couple angles. There. There's a bunch of cuts. Something went horribly wrong just shooting the river, and they had to cut. <laughs> <laughs> like cut away to his hands. Ah, oh, fuck! I dropped it again. <laughs> He tries to skip the camera. Fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cut. That's why he didn't have a cell phone in that other scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but as the creeper guy, is, as the hoodie guy is, is carrying her through the woods, she drops a hairband. I thought it was a, what would Jesus do bracelet? It turns out it's a hairband. This will be a clue later. Oh. So he, she drops that and then the kidnapper carries her to this prison shack. Now, we have to point out this is a movie where they can't handle like second cell phone in terms of props, but they for some reason have access to a pristine rustic torture prison <laughs> camp. <laughs> yeah, where did they find? You're so right. Where You think they made this whole movie because they have that weird shack? <laughs> I, I hope that's, I, I don't know. But one way or the other, the fact that this family has access to a goddamn shack that has bars on the fucking windows should alert all of us. <laughs> well, it's like they show like a meat hook, right? Yeah. And uh -huh. so I wonder if this is like, they're probably like, hunter types no, sure no no oh, no 100%. shame yeah i have friends who hunt but like these are like prepper hunter types this is probably their i don't know do you think that this is like their what do you call it like their deer locker but why would it have it's, it's their dungeon cabin in the windows it yeah it. I don't. <laughs> it might also be for deer sometimes but it's for fucking people it's for the aesthetic <laughs> so. live laugh love I wanted this to be like an episode of Cribs. There's like a real estate agent being like, and then the, uh, the all part of cabin opens up into a nice uh, a dungeon with uh, a lot dungeon. of good natural light for torturing naturally, Rusticky. north facing. So, <laughs> so then we have a quick voiceover of, of David talking to the cops. The cop explains that there have been two other kidnappings in the park already that year and that they think that the suspect lives in the park somewhere. Right. But again, you make it sound like this is a conversation. <laughs> it's literally like one line. Like he goes, what do you know? And he's like, well, two other kidnappings. We think he lives in the park. What happened to the guy, uh, to the to the kidnapped girls? One's dead in the river. The other, we never found her. Cool. Good talk. Bye. Okay. Like it's the weirdest. No cop would ever tell. No, why the leaving fuck would they, You know where like, I think what? that he lives? What? <laughs> That's yeah. insane. Also, you just said there's two other kidnappings at this park in the past. The bad guy we're pretty sure lives in the park. And this other guy on the phone who you've never met before said, what happened to those other girls? <laughs> I need the cop right. to be like, I never said girls. You're the bad guy. <laughs> Right. I'm arresting you now. <laughs> I can tell the by the guy gate. in a hoodie, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Is that your left leg or your right leg that's doing the limping? <laughs> oh, it's so, so bad. Oh, oh, in that case, in that case. So, yeah. So, and there's also this great shot. We see a helicopter, like a search helicopter that happened to go by during one of the days where <laughs> yeah. they were filming and they were like, fuck yeah, God has sent us a sign. <laughs> <So> <laughs> We also, we see people in, in orange safety jackets, like combing through the woods. And we see them from such a distance that you can't tell that it's very obviously Ashley and David Wright, you know. <laughs> and like Mayella, the kid or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, also, there's also this like montage where we see him. He's running around the park 
looking into windows to see if maybe his wife is in there. <laughs> Why are there whole ass houses in the middle of this park? That seemed weird to it's, me it's too. Yeah. Right? Like what? Yeah. They, so these people in these houses live near their one of their neighbors has a dungeon that they've <laughs> mm-hmm. seen for sure. <laughs> Obviously <laughs> they're cool with it. And instead of knocking on their doors and being like, hey, have you seen a kidnapper with a woman? He just looks to see if she's there and then right. runs off. Yeah, glances <laughs> yeah. in the window and then runs away. Sarah, bad guy? Nope. Next house. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Well, he's he's taken the the outhouse doghouse speech from the fugitive. Literally, I guess I, I like I expected part of this montage for him to be like actually turning over stones, right? You know, <laughs> that is basically what we're watching. And then we get the the hoodie guy. We get hoodie him, evil him, calling his partner in the kidnapping. Mm. Right. He's like, you got to come pick this girl up. There's cops everywhere. I'm like, you're not selling this very well. (laughs) No, no. And you guys, at this point, it's only been 30 minutes. Yeah, we're we're not even quite half a minute mark of this movie. (laughs) (laughs) It's peaking. Just it's the arc. Think about the arc. It fits. Oh, and my favorite, my favorite is that in the background, while all of this is happening, basically just like the good guy is just walking around the woods, like kicking the ground, like, oh, I can't yeah. find her anywhere, yes. like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> and in the background, there's like, I wrote, the music cuts feel like one of those old, now that's what I call sad piano music, volume seven. <laughs> <laughs> where it's just like new piano <laughs> scrolling. <you know? laughs> oh, oh she's so got to sell a CD, Ashley Wright. <laughs> yeah. There's also this great moment where we're watching him like, you know, harumph his way around the woods, angrily beseeching <laughs> yeah. God. There's this one moment where he like very clearly slips in the snow and starts to fall down. But then he pretends he was intentionally going down on his knees to <laughs> to ask God for some help. It's so good. To pray. It's like yeah. when my cats fall off of something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it goes so badly so many times and he keeps trying to do this. A moment later, he like. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a run. I'm going to do a run. He starts running for three steps. His pants literally start to fall down. He grabs the back of his jeans, gets them back up a little bit. Two steps later, he's winded and like bends over and they have to cut. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, so much of this movie, too, is just Ashley Wright randomly panning over trees to the point where I felt like, like maybe her message with this really was supposed to be. Can you believe all these fucking trees, y'all? So we watch him wander around randomly through the woods to elevator music for a while before he eventually enters into the anger phase, right? He starts like, he demands that God tell him where his wife is and then he picks up a stick and starts hitting a tree with it. (laughs) Yep. Yep. (laughs) It goes so badly for him because he didn't calculate the like, Okay, it breaks in half, but then it gets a lot harder to do that again. When it's short. So he like <laughs> breaks a stick on a tree and he's like, broke it. And then he, fuck, okay, the shorter one is very difficult to break leverage wise. <laughs> Should have paid more attention in physics. <laughs> hard. So he hits this tree with this stick like eight times. And then in case we're curious, he says, this is what I'll do to him. I'm like, hit him with a stick. I feel like there's worse. That you could do to him, no? But, well, no, he doesn't. He just <laughs> no. You're right. Spoiler: he, he hits doesn't. him with a rock. I mean, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I give away the, the only thing that happens in the next thirty yeah, minutes. Yeah, now the movie is spoiled, Kara. It's <laughs> yeah, right. Spoiled. <laughs> you Jeez. mean you mean the diorama? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so okay, so that, so he goes back to his car. His daughters though don't think he's montaged hard enough yet. Right. They're like, Dad, you should have found mom by now. And he's like, really, you're going to make this harder on me. You're going to you're on my ass about this. Okay, still on about this. My mom was kidnapped shit. Okay, no, but Dad, you just you went like three steps in the woods. Then you hit a stick on a tree and then you got frustrated (laughs) with the stick not being able to break again. And then we're back in the nothing happened, really. Yeah, really. So, yeah, but he sits in the car long enough to to try for tears like for a good time. He, He doesn't get them. He tries, though. He tries. This is his Oscar clip. And then he heads back out into the woods for another running around the goddamn woods montage. (laughs) This is this is approaching birdemic levels of bad at this point. So I see your note here that I didn't notice before. 
we watched this movie once already, except it, instead of David in a hoodie, she'd been kidnapped by David in a Bigfoot mask. Really? The other movie is the same movie? The same exact goddamn okay. movie. No. I'm pretty sure they just filmed this and then they were like, do it again with a Bigfoot mask? Yeah. Right, because this was their <laughs> first go. So they were like, next time we have $200. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was, I think it was the daughter that got kidnapped in the Bigfoot movie. But yes, it was I this. I see, I see. We're mass producing. I also, I, I have to I have to point at this out because during the second montage of him running around the woods looking for clues or whatever, they show him going northward on this bridge like looking for her, like maybe she's maybe she's northward on this bridge, but then like he doesn't find her, so he's like, well, maybe she's southward on this. Bridge. <laughs> Forgot to look while I was running that way. So good, which is already so dumb. But on the way northward, he slips on this little patch of snow that's in the middle of the bridge, yes, yes. really badly. And then the same exact patch yes. of snow on the southward <laughs> trip across the bridge. He slips even worse. I was, I was weeping with laughter <laughs> at this moment. So goddamn good. <laughs> so, okay. So now having exhausted his run around the woods yelling at God plan, he goes to the police station. <laughs> no, he goes to McDonald's. He goes to McDonald's. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a McDonald's right next to the. But what's so good about this fucking scene is that we watch him. He pulls up. There's a police station. There's a McDonald's right next to it. We watch him like wait for traffic to clear enough for him to jump out of his car for like <laughs> a minute and a half. <laughs> and then we watch him go into the police station. Of course, they're not going to let him film in there. So then we, we cut to like a voiceover from that point, right? Him doing his, uh, his detective voice. Oh, it's so bad. And the detective tells him, hey, ain't no reason for you to be out here anymore. You can go home, take your daughters home tonight. There'll be a search crew out all night. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he, he walks back out. They got no shots inside of that building, no, no, of course. No. He walks back out and he starts to look at McDonald's and <laughs> stops himself. Because <laughs> he clearly was just there to get a number two or whatever. And he's like, nope, dumb. <laughs> Walking back to my car. Finishing the shot first. Yeah, he smelled those fries. It was like Bugs Bunny when he smells carrots or something. <laughs> Also, by the way, my music note here is Ashley learned five entire notes on that violin. That's plenty. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's one violin song to break up all the, now that's what I call sad piano music. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. There's only like eight notes total. Five is pretty good, Noah. It's, <laughs> it's true, actually. Learn an octave. <laughs> so seven. Sharps and flats don't count. So. <laughs> there's there's so much indiscriminate use of slow mo in this yes, movie. Yes. Just like now we have to watch them literally drive all the way home. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> right. In we have slow mo montage <laughs> of another nature montage shot of them driving home. My God. Yeah. Oh, and then this whole weird thing where I think they use helicopter noises, but they just shine a flashlight into the lens yeah. to make you <laughs> yes. think there's a helicopter. Absolutely correct. But what's so weird is like, why would the helicopter be fixed over his home? He's right, at we're home in his house. Now. Yes. <laughs> well, she should come what? home. She come home. Okay. Why would it be fixed over their home like inches from their window right. in their face. I know. Like, like I think we're supposed to be going, oh, good, they're out looking for her. Why aren't they looking for her in the park? Right. Like, what? I'm so confused. It's the perfect crime. They're hiding at his house. <laughs> so, yeah, so then, then we get a quick shot of him putting his kids to bed. They're still on about their mom getting kidnapped. I haven't shut up about it all day. Which, by the way, it's not one shot of him putting his kids plural to bed. It's two totally separate yes. scenes of him putting <laughs> each child to bed for no fucking reason. No, no, no. Nothing is communicated there. No. He walks down the hallway, slips on a patch of snow between their rooms inside the house. It's so much. <sighs> yeah, but he promises the kids that he'll find mom tomorrow. God will lead him to her. This is where I noticed that the little girl had a cell phone and I had all of these questions about why they didn't just <laughs> fucking use it in that last scene. But then once the kids are in bed, he echo prays to the moon. Oh, yeah, they put reverb on the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, and they are yeah. not, if you think they're going to skimp us on the Lord's Prayer, you are mistaken. We get the fucking long version with the drum solo here. Right. 
like his 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 wife is missing. Why is he praying for bread? Like I'm so yeah. confused. Yes. <laughs> like Lou Gehrig. Like today, today, today. In yeah. Jesus name, <laughs> yes. name, name, name. Amen. And then we have this. We have these uh, fucking fond memories of her in sepia moment again, right? My music note here was fuck y'all. The intro to Claire de Lune is public domain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and he keeps looking into the camera and it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, because he's supposed to, he's looking into our eyes as he looks into her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. And she oh, goes, Oh, yeah. He's like astral projecting her now, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, and they have an awkward moment during their love astral projection. Because <laughs> she's like, How would you describe me with positive adjectives right now, please? And I was like, Yikes. Shut it down. Just shut it down. This man's wife literally turned on a camera and said, describe how much you love me into this camera. Action. <laughs> but then he like doesn't really. He just yeah, looks he's creepily like, into uh, the camera. Rain. Basic snow, freedoms. What? Shine. <laughs> suit strap. Fuck. Shoes. Lady. <laughs> Man, woman, person, TV. Um, so, and then, so then we, we cut to Ashley. She's hanging out in the torture dungeon. I guess this is her Oscar clip too. Sure is. Oh, because she cries. So I haven't said this at this point because I want to be nice because I feel like sometimes on this show, it's really easy for us to just shit all over the people in these movies. It is. But, You're I mean, about to say open. however and then say something though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, duh. Okay. So... <laughs> So Ashley Wright, and I feel like I shouldn't have waited until she was in the torture dungeon because she, by the way, looks the exact same in the torture dungeon as she does in the first scene of the movie. Right, yeah, when she's... She looks wrecked. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, she has this, like, I just left rehab look going on for her. And I yeah. don't really know if that's like, like, and fine, that might just be her, her vibe. But like, why is that the vibe they're going for in this film? Yeah. She's like a like crypt keeper, like after a makeover. Sure. You know, <laughs> she's she looks very strung out this whole movie. You know how like, I don't know if you ever made a jello, you know, you put it in the fridge liquid and it doesn't quite turn into a jello. So you end up with like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, hear me out. She's like, if you did that with a with a vampire. Right. Like if you started to make a vampire. It didn't quite actually take. Yes. Yes, yeah. like she's a little translucent. <laughs> yeah, a little she's bit. She's a little, a little cachectic. A little creature of the night. Yeah, but yes. not, yeah, yeah. But even in the even in the scenes where she's supposed to look normal, right. she looks like that. Like her body was rejecting a transplant of her body onto her body. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but that's what it looks like. And oh, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Yeah. And I'm glad you all agree with me because it was really, it was just in the back of my mind. <laughs> I got to say, though, David Wright looking good. David Owen Wright. <laughs> yeah, he looks, happy. Is a good looking he looks man. like he's been hitting the gym. It's true. He's got the he's got the the bald head and the beard, which is just mm -hmm. super cool. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. No, guys with bald heads and red beards. Are... Yeah. He looks like one of those guys in those strongman competitions where they eat like 40 cheeseburgers and then they flip a tire over 20. Right. Times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Like like posi in a positive way. Right. Yeah, in, in a good, good way. Yeah, good, yeah. yeah. And then she looks like she's dying. <laughs> so she does. And by, and by the way, like <laughs> if you're wondering why it is that we've just taken an aside to talk about nothing but her physical appearance for so long, it's because the camera just lingers on her now for like a minute and a half with no dialogue. She's not yeah. saying she's just sort of looking around going, Well, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in another rain delay. We got a vamp about something. It's the, a movie with rain delays. Yeah. The only thing she says is, John, come save me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, I wouldn't be, I feel like if I were kidnapped and in like a dungeon, I wouldn't be appealing to like my, my partner. <laughs> sure. I would be like thinking about how maybe professionals would be on the case. Sure. Right. Sure. You know, that would be, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe Liam trying to Neeson, figure out. Jason Statham, yeah, they, something. Exact. Duh. Or I might be trying to talk to the kidnapper and convince him why this is a bad idea. But instead, she like goads him the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. She's like, yeah, try me. Yeah. Fucking hit me. <laughs> like, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. No, he'll he'll show up here in a minute. But but first, we have to cr we have to cut back over to David. He's going to give another prayer. Now, he already did the Lord's Prayer. Now he's got a manly prayer that has fucking oh, yeah. rocks and strength instead of bread and forgiveness. <laughs> right. It's fucking weird. And buckling. Yes. 
It talks about buckling a lot. Like my buckler? Was that not a word in the prayer that I w- I didn't know that was God in was prayers. my buckler, my, my buckler, buckler and the horn of my salvation. I looked it up. It's apparently that's the little tiny like forearm shield that they used to have back in the day. That's a buckler. Oh. Apparently God is one of those. Yeah. Sure. In my head, he was like, God's my leather worker and he makes my <laughs> spurs. He makes my chap. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, given how much luck you're having holding your pants up, I don't think you want to brag about your buckler right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, and this is when they, they play Dream State like astral projection Marco Polo for some Yes, I uh-huh, right? sure do. The daughter's <laughs> pointing him this way and that. Yeah, it turns into a horror movie. They like put a filter on the camera so the daughter looks like she's in the ring. Yep. Yeah, that was weird. And then she just like lifts her arm and points to one side like, mom is that way. Yeah. uh You'll need this later when you remember it. I love that he was so bad at dream state Marco Polo that in theory, God had to be like, ugh, all right, I'll put your daughter in there literally pointing pointing in in this, go this way, (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, and in the meantime, is this the scene where the wife is just crying? Yes. Uh huh. And then she like she like and she has a pretty good cry, but then she like doesn't know what else. She, you can see her being like, "Cut the camera." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, <laughs> I did like fifteen good seconds. <laughs> they just keep filming her. <laughs> and then, of course, like dad rolls over in the middle of his dream and he reaches out for her, but she's not there. And because he's a fucking idiot, he keeps pawing at the area she would normally be in. That stuff. Yeah. He's going to find but her. But really, he's finally just in a normal-sized bed for his right. giant body. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's kind of comfortable. Thank you. My note here was like, ah, oh, let me spread out. I'm going to starfish Yeah, it. finally. Yeah. It. Uh, if I get this wife back, we're going to do a separate bedroom thing. Just because yeah, statistically, exactly. people are happier when they do something. that. They often get better sleep. It's just psychologically, it's proven that it's better for a lot of people to do that. All right. Well, I know I'm on the edge of my seat, but it's mostly because I have to pee and I'm getting a head start. So we're going to take a quick break. As soon as I give Act 3 the hard sell, will trees move from the left side of the screen to the right? Will trees move from the right side of the screen to the left? Will trees remain stationary in the center of the shot? Find out the answers to pretty much just that when we return for the torpid conclusion of In Jesus' Name. David Owen Wright, the one and only. It is an honor to meet you. Welcome to the big Hollywood studio. Ah, Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Yeah, now, let's get straight to the point. Now, look, we've seen to badge the Bible at Bigfoot. We absolutely love that. We want to sign Excellent. you on for a multi-movie deal. Oh, that's great. That's great. All the glory to Jesus, though. Yeah. yeah. So I already approved a $30 million budget for your next movie. Uh, do not need it. Don't need it at all. You don't You don't need a budget to, like, Mm-mm. hire actors? Uh, all set on actors. I'm doing the uh, Eddie Murphy thing. Oh, all right. Yeah. Great. Lucky us. Mm-hmm. We also got Hans Zimmer signed to do the music Jewish. for you. What? Uh, my wife is learning piano and violin next week, both of those things. So we're good on music too. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's just my pager really quick. Um, hey, do you have a pay phone in the lobby that I can use? You don't have a, a cell phone? David, David, wake up. It's your turn for a haircut. Sorry. Sorry. I got it. I'm up. I'm up. Oh, this is me. It's my turn. All right. So you, cool. you, you just want the normal beard trim? Yeah, uh, actually, no, I want that and a goatee, a beard and goatee. What? Yeah, I want a beard and a goatee on top of the beard, I've decided. So you want me to cut it in like a like a bass relief? Yeah, bass, yep, bay leaf, yep. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with David heading out the next morning for another hard day of montaging. <laughs> God, it never ends. Quick stop at McDonald's first. And then <laughs> oh, yeah. he's going to go look for his kidnapped uh, wife. This whole scene I wrote, sorry, I looked away. Literally nothing happened, did it? <laughs> yeah, no, no, honestly. <laughs> 
So I look, okay, so he he starts off, he drives back to the playground where it all began. He looks in the bathroom again, right? Like maybe <laughs> she has just been in there the whole no, no, he's not. Doubled back. That would have been genius. <laughs> no. Okay. But yeah, he's doing a forensic sweep of the, the yes. crime scene here. Yes. Like I thought honestly, I thought he was gonna like pick up some dirt on a knife and taste it for yeah, a right. second. <laughs> 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 He's walking around waiting for his holy spidey senses to tingle. I, it, see, like, I, I wrote in my notes. It's like, if I was a kidnapped wife, where would I have gone? You know, <laughs> He's such an idiot. It would have been funny if he got kidnapped when he went into the lady's room. Like, right, if right away he kidnapped like, a guy By who looks himself. just like him, tackled yeah. him. Right. Yeah, exactly. I've been waiting here for weeks. Fuck. <laughs> also, we have to point out this attempted artsy shot by Ashley here where they have the shopping bag blowing in the wind, but it's a <laughs> it's a reusable <laughs> shopping bag, so it's too heavy to do the thing, you know? That One of the many shots where they were convinced they were going to win, like, best cinematography on top of best yes. original score and best <laughs> acting and best whatever. And this was like, American Beauty, American Beauty, bags flat. No, it's too heavy. We used the fucking burlap sack. It's not doing anything. <laughs> Shouldn't have put all those rocks in there. Right. Damn it. <laughs> so, okay. So, meanwhile, Hoodie Creeper's on the phone. He's setting up the exchange. This is, I, I just, it's hardly even worth mentioning the scene, except that at the end of the phone call, he says to his kidnapping partners, bring the money. Right. So, so at this point, I'm like, this is a <laughs> ransom situation. Like, I, I think he's selling her into like sex slavery or something. I don't know. I think sure. that's, yeah, this plot is very thin for a movie about walking in circles. Yeah, like, right. They just had so much time. Is it ever don't bring the money? For one of I, those? Just, I feel like <laughs> I know, it, right? that's implied. You just obviously, <laughs> in a criminal endeavor, you just bring the money. There's this great moment. We watch David is still thinking sad piano Lee, <laughs> And we watch this moment where he walks up to the map and he looks at it, to, like, I guess, to see if the you are here sticker has any clues. <laughs> I thought to myself, my God, y'all, he saw a big red arrow and got excited for a second. <laughs> Bad guy dungeon? No, it's, oh, it's I am here. It. It's I am here. That would have been fucking here, perfect, though, though right? <laughs> Ooh, it's so bad. He also he tries to tear out of the parking lot, but he's in his big SUV, so it doesn't <laughs> work. In his infinity. This, was the, this was almost my best worst of him being like, very clearly, babe, babe, get me peeling out in my infinity QX. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, drive away slowly. Yep, and then we get another montage of him looking through the woods. He checks under the bridge. He checks over the bridge. He's looking for Korok seeds at this point, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so then we check back in at the torture dungeon. This is the first time we get a shot of how comically small the padlock holding her in this thing is. <laughs> yeah. I would not have trusted my high school locker to that little thing. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like the thing that you would put on your journal. Right. Yes. <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, like that and the hasp that it's hooked to both. Like if you harumphily leaned against that door, you would break it open. <laughs> but later, but later, I know it's a spoiler. He tries to kick the door in and can't. So they have to cut away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I, now I'm convinced that's because he wasn't like he didn't have permission to actually break anything. Uh, but yeah, so it yeah, could probably. be either way. It's pretty funny either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his friend who owns a fucking dungeon was like, don't mess up my dungeon. And he's yeah. like, all right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. So we cut back to, to David. He's now in the bargaining phase of the kidnapping. He says to God, he's like, God, you're like, you're ruining our ministry. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, you think right. those movies are just going to make themselves? Well, because <laughs> Ashley's gone from the ministry. Yes. Uh -huh. This is like putting in a bunch of compliments for her into the non script. Like the ministry's nothing without her. She's, right. Because yeah. she is literally 50% of the ministry. <laughs> well, she's also, she's the music. I've never had so many male orgasms and, and now I'm not because she's gone. <laughs> her beautifulness from my life. <laughs> God, you're going to ruin Christmas. So, yeah. So then we cut back to Ashley a little bit more. We watch her look for a while. We're like, really? Is that we're going to get another scene of her looking, huh? But then the hoodie creeper shows up to throw her in some food, right? <laughs> OK, 
okay. Yeah. And she's like, what do you want with me? But they forgot to like think about that in advance. So he just doesn't say anything. Yeah. Right. right. Just general right. kidnapping stuff. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it, it takes them a while. Every line, there's like a 15 second gap while they think oh, of yeah, that's what a they good should question. say Shit. next. Are you stalling? <laughs> I think they're waiting to see if the if like the their daughter on the other end of the iPhone gives the thumbs up. Like, yeah, I'm rolling now. <laughs> I'm like, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I got that. I got that. You know, it's like when you're posing for a picture and then you're like, oh, it's a video. Like that's this whole movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I love that the food he shows up with, it's clearly a leftover rib yep. in a little baggie that they saved. And yep. he's like, all right, I'll give her the baggie with like one leftover. But then you watch his brain be like, mm, I kind of want some of this. <laughs> and he yes. tears off part of a rib, takes it out of the baggie, and throws it in and walks away with the rest of the rib in the baggie. Yes, I'm not wasting a perfectly good rib on this. Yeah, so. I'm keeping the burnt end me. Good bark. <laughs> Best part, yeah. But she explains that that he's she's not afraid of him because her husband is the main character, damn it. Yeah, she's like, God's going to save me. And he goes, God who? I liked that line. Well, except that he's <laughs> wearing a Christian hoodie at the time, right? Like yeah. if this man owned one hoodie that didn't say, I love Jesus on it, that line might have made sense. He is wearing it ironically. <laughs> he literally goes, I don't... <laughs> I don't do God. He does. He does. Yep. <laughs> and and then he says, y you watch out or I'm going to duct tape your mouth shut. And there's this insanely long pause. And finally she goes, go ahead. It won't stop me from singing. And I'm like, it would though. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly the thing that it would stop you from doing. <laughs> I've never <laughs> understood. <laughs> you have another rib. <laughs> I've just never really understood this like weird Christian thing that they do in every movie, every story, all the lore that like God would somehow want them to proclaim their loyalty and then like suffer for it. Right. <laughs> like literally God's like that oven is hot. And they're like, and he's like, show me how much you love me. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> God. <laughs> like, why is every story like this? Stab your child to death. Yes. It's yeah. So I think you weird. just described Christianity in like a 30 second <laughs> snippet there. Yep. She's literally, he's like, I'm going to come punch you in the throat. And she's like, do it. Like, oh, why? Why are you saying grace? <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, and I will say, like, okay, so defiantly sings I'll Fly Away. That's the kind of thing even a good actor might struggle with. So needless to say, she doesn't exactly nail it. Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. That was that was fun though. We're trying to <laughs> sing that song like we're not gonna take grace, fly away. Fly away. So good. So so he's like, ah, I'm going to get you. So he walks in. We, we we cut away and we hear like the sound effect of a slap because they honestly, they don't know how to film that without him actually slapping her. So good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then we cut back out to David who's pointing out to God how useless he's been throughout this movie. Right. He says at the beginning of the scene, God, I'm just running around in circles. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. He says it out loud. I wanted a voice of God to be like, yeah, man, you've tripped over the same patch of snow like eight <laughs> times. <laughs> Going back and forth across one bridge. I need you to try a this little yeah, harder. Obviously the same bridge. <laughs> so. I'll do a Marco Polo thing with you, but like, you got to give me a little bit. Come on. <laughs> Your notes like helped me make sense of this because I thought at this point he leaned over and found a leaf. <laughs> like he just like picks up, picks up some dirt. He tastes the leaf. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah, but no, but he's found her hair tie. Now this is, guy. this is a black fucking hair tie. It is the most generic accessory that can or has ever existed in the universe. If you went to any random state park and looked hard enough, you could find nine or ten black hair ties per <laughs> acre, I think. <laughs> right? But he sees that and he's like, well, I know her black hair tie anyway. <laughs> She's been this way. But isn't he just back where they were like where she got kidnapped i'm so confused no he's long though he's made it a quite a ways through his heavenly dowsing so far i guess he's just somewhere along the same circle that he's been yeah walking. right right yeah it's <laughs> right. a good part of the circle he's walking <laughs> yeah. in yeah 
but that doesn't help, right? Because like, he's like, all right, well, I know she's been here. Shit, there are still 360 different directions from here, too. Fuck. No, there's not. There's only there's left two. or right. right. There you're right, though. There's just two. He's like, God, tell me, is she left or is she right? And I was like, fuck, man. If she's straight ahead, you're all the way screwed. <laughs> so good. Again, I needed the voice of God to be like, why would it only be two options? What are you talking about? Follow the fucking footprints. Are you serious? They're right there. Know, we did right. Chekhov's footprints earlier and the bracelet at the same time. God. They show the footprints here. They show footprints in the snow and then they just ignore it. For, yes. For the right. rest of the movie. And then he doesn't notice them. We cut back to Ashley praying that God helps. Us. She's like, you're, He's not going to get it just from the hairband. God, <laughs> you're going to have to kick in a little more help. Will you teach him footprints? I don't know what to ask for right now. <laughs> and then and then we get shots of the sunset. So apparently, because we know he started first thing in the fucking morning, right? He started with an Egg McMuffin in this goddamn shit. <laughs> so apparently he spent now the entire day and evening standing in the middle of the woods going, come on, God, left or right? Google Maps does it. How come you can't? <laughs> yeah, just kicking the ground going, go. Yeah. I can't find her anywhere. <laughs> oh. But it's just then that he remembers his daughter looking all ringed up from the dream the night before. <laughs> yeah. And she was pointing left. Right? So now he has to go to the left. That's the correct direction. Wait, my left or her yeah, left? Yeah, right. That's the thing. It's so stupid. It's like when your friend calls you and they're like, which way left or right? And I'm like, I don't know where you're coming from, <laughs> <Right>? idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean north, south? Like, come on. Can we the royal the right left. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just go with the arm way. What? I'm God. I sent you a sign. It's just the physical arm goes the way. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. So, but yeah, but left turns out to be the correct, like cosmically left turns out to be the right <laughs> direction. And he, he approaches the torture dungeon. Now he, I love this. He's ducking on, this is such an enormous human being, right? But he keeps <laughs> ducking behind shit that's way smaller than him on the way up. Like he's in a fucking <laughs> Assassin's Creed game or some this shit. This is my favorite scene because it's like the whole movie, he's been wandering around looking for her. He finally finds her and they don't change the music cue at all. No. It's just like the <laughs> same background. Like literally you would not know that he had found her because they do nothing to tell you that except that he comes up on a torture dungeon. No, it's still the sneak up music like glunk, 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 <laughs> glunk, yes. glunk. And he's holding like a bonsai tree in front of his enormous frame to hide him. <laughs> She's like, look at me straight ahead. You hear, look at this noise of me. I'm here. Oh, and my favorite is she's like, be careful. There's a man out there. Of course, there's a man out there. She didn't lock herself right. in the what, cage. What did you do? What did we <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh accidentally God. did this? <laughs> she kidnapped herself. Man. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a raccoon trap. She's like, mm, cake. <laughs> the door locks behind her. <laughs> <laughs> if he ends up in a little, like an enormous have a heart trap at the end of this movie, yeah, right. best finish ever. Uh, oh. So that there's this also this great moment where he goes around the torture dungeon and he's you know yanking at the bars on the windows to see if they'll come, but but they would right like if this guy actually tugged on him really hard, they would very obviously come out. So he has to give him these tiny little shakes. And shit. Yeah, like the little the little journal yeah. padlock. He's like meet meet not yeah. coming off. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but as he's doing all of this, he's also sneaking up on himself, right? Like bad, oh, yeah. bad him is sneaking up on good him. Oh, I was so excited because I was like, how are they going to do this split screen fight? Because when it was a Yeti, it was the greatest <laughs> fight Yes. Ever. Oh, but they they didn't have that technology yet. Remember, this came first. Oh, yeah. They were still a little bit raw. So yeah, they're not no, quite there yet. Just barely into the three digit numbers on budget here. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so but, by one dollar, <laughs> right? So, but but David David hears himself coming. It's it's, it's really fucking weird. Uh, but ultimately, he does get the drop on himself. I'm sorry, audience. 
this is the best I can do. Bad him sneaks up on good him, right? And he puts a gun to his own head. <laughs> or, or he implies that he does. Because well, you right, just no. see him. Like, like his frame is large enough that he's blocking out anything that we are implying is happening behind him. <laughs> right. right. And the camera's pointed <laughs> up a little bit so that you can't yeah. tell there's nobody back there, right? Yeah, so he just lifts his hands and you hear a voice from off camera go, put up your hands. <laughs> And then, and then he goes like, God, please forgive me. And you know he's asking forgiveness in advance for kicking so much ass, right? <laughs> you what? The guy goes, I'm going to shoot you. And he goes, in Jesus' name, you're not going to shoot me. And I'm like, oh, fuck, he's using his Christian force powers, guys. By the way, I want to point this out. The dude does shoot him. Right? Like the whole fucking movie is about if you ask for something in Jesus' name, you're going to get it. Later, the guy will shoot him. This just that. Oh, yeah. That matters. But not yet, because first he's going to do a spin punch faster than a speeding bullet. (laughs) (laughs) Spin punch to nothing, by the way. Well, right. Yeah, because he can't punch himself. So to the extent that he punches anything, we watch him at one point pretend to punch his wife in a hoodie slightly (laughs) off camera. (laughs) The sound effects in this moment are insane, too. Oh, it's, it's so bad. It's so, like, cartoons. He, like, he spins around and punches a slide whistle somehow, and then he falls <laughs> over. And, and there's, like, it's in. It's the best. Yeah, there's so many times where I wanted to write, like, this is, like, a high school film project, but it's not. It's, like, an no. elementary school film project. Right, a high school film project, you'd expect a lot more out of it. Yeah. Right, because this was, what year was this made? 2019. 2019. Like, couldn't you just, aren't there just like Instagram apps that would do better than this? <laughs> yep, sure are. Like, it's like he filmed this on a camcorder. And you know what there also was by 2019 is other human beings. You could have just <laughs> right. asked your friend Dave, hey, Dave, could you wear a hoodie for the purposes of this fight scene? But no, no, we get the like the one shot of him punching and then a different separate shot of him being punched. These people don't have friends. Thank you. That's what I was about to say. They clearly went around their shitty main town and were like, do you want to? Nope. (laughs) Uh, Okay. All right. But ultimately, though, he hits himself with a stick, just like the foreshadowing earlier where he's in the tree and yelling, I'm going to do this to the bad guy later. And he yells, you need more Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's his hasta la vista baby moment there. <laughs> so he has some Jesus, this kid. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We just not, in, he's insufficiently jesus <laughs> So yeah, so then we, he goes back to the torture ju- dungeon. He yanks at the door. He has to do it gingerly because again, you could fart that padlock open. <laughs> and then this is where he like kicks it and we cut away right before his foot reaches it because either he failed or the guy wouldn't let him kick his door. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it's he starts carrying her away. Now, she's not injured, right? She could just walk. <laughs> yeah. And, and I feel like that would be faster. Yeah, she had ropes on and you could see her be like, why don't you just untie my ropes and we walk? <laughs> <laughs> Or run. How about we run? We and can we run, run from the bad guy. Well, and, and and let's keep in mind that later she won't have those ropes and no one will have untied her, right? So <laughs> Jesus did it. Oh, that's that's that must be it. That's yeah. why there was only one set of footprint. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> footprints with holes in them. <laughs> oh, amazing. So it so they go to waddle away. The hoodie creeper, he's getting up. He's he's woke up from his unconsciousness. He grabs his gun. But they don't show that happen. They show no, him no. hit the ground. He's down. And then all of a sudden, he's just there with a gun. Like, yep. Wait, what? Yeah. I guess he woke up. Yep. Apparently, David didn't even think to take the man's gun. Right? <laughs> he just left no. it there. He hit him with a stick and was like, yep, let's leave that's, him armed. That's it. That's all I need to do. <laughs> he drops her so fucking hard here. Though. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's aggressive. The fact that she didn't break a fuck, because she's tiny, right? Like the fact he he doesn't just drop her. He drops her on the ground and then falls on top of her. Right. Right. No, she should shatter like the liquid metal guy got frozen here. Like it's insane. (laughs) And this is all after the, the hoodie guy shoots his gun at them. Yes. Right. Like this is a clear because this was very confusing for a couple of scenes. There is a gunshot here. 
Yes. Right? Yes. I don't know if anyone was supposed to have been shot by it. I don't either. And if so, who? But he drops his wife. Right, yeah. Okay. The the closed captioning was like, gunshot? Yeah. From bad guy? <laughs> We don't know. Well, no, and apparently this bad guy's gun is one of them old fashioned one shooters, right? Because every time he, <laughs> shoot, he every time he shoots, he has to like <laughs> fish around in his pocket for the other bullet he had, right? Yeah. So he shoots. Uh, David Wright stumbles his way back. He, he stashes his wife behind a tree, and then he turns back around and he he gives us his like I ain't fucking around no more face, right? Uh huh. So he starts. Walking back to the bad guy to kick a little ass. Uh-huh. The bad guy shoots at him again, but it's a one shooter, so he has to reload now. <laughs> but he's walking like the bad guy is like crouched down, like gun cocked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pointing right at him, and he's just walking towards him. Right. Yeah. Why would you walk towards somebody who's pointing a gun at you? He's got the Christ confidence. That's exactly <laughs> it. He was protected but he wasn't. by his Lord. But here's no. the thing. He wasn't. <laughs> he totally wasn't. <laughs> so, all right. So so the bad guy shoots. Again, he's out of bullets now. He's got to reload. And he does that thing they do in movies, like the gun jammed or something, and he like struggles with it for a second, and then he just drops it in the dirt. Why do people do this in movies? Aren't guns expensive? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, why don't you just be like, this doesn't work anymore and just throw it away? <laughs> yeah, just toss it like an infomercial. Yeah, it makes no it's sense. so odd. Also, they do a close-up of the bad guy with the gun crouching right before he takes the shot. And you can see the same wedding ring that obviously <laughs> oh my God. Right is wearing the whole time. I love it. Yes. And clearly, he could have taken it off, but this guy refused <laughs> to take off his magical metal Right, no, I'd be single then. For the bad guy shots. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then the bad guy shoots. David Wright pulls out his skipping stone from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing, guys. As David and Goliath rock. <laughs> And he throws it at the guy's head. And again, like this man does not like this is a big guy, right? Like this guy obviously lifts weights and shit, takes a lot of pride in the size of his biceps, whatever. He does not know how throwing works, though. No. <laughs> right. Like even just throwing this rock, it's just like, dude, that wouldn't have even gone forward, though. And and even if it did, like, it's a little rock. A little like, tiny it just skipping, hit him. It's a skipping stone. It would have just hit him and then been like, Okay, why'd you throw that rock at me? I just shot you. Yeah. I just shot you with a gun. In the chest. Yeah. He throws it like two bartenders. One was like, hey, toss me that lime right there. He like throws it like that. Yes. And then yes. and then the guy's like, blah, blah, and he's dead oh, no, from this rock I'm throw. Dead yeah. now. And he's dead. Yeah, he's just out down for the count. Oh yeah. Uh, David Rock. And in the in the story, doesn't he at least use a slingshot? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah, supposed to have a sling. That would have gone, actually that would have gone very badly. Oh, they, right! That would have actually been right in his face immediately. As yeah, soon as he tried to spin that thing around once. Honestly, fucking, amazing. I would, I would pay for their next movie. It's only a hundred bucks, so I would pay for their next movie <laughs> if he agreed to use a sling in it. Right, just like get yeah. and send me the outtakes Mul- multiple times. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so he knocks the guy out. He gets his. He goes back to his wife. He goes to take off his overshirt, and you see now that the, the, the God didn't protect him from the bullet. The dude shot him immediately in the center of the fucking chest. <laughs> yeah, he's just got a big bloody hole in his chest. So he stumbles a bit, and then he dies. He lays down, and he dies. But Ashley knows how to ask for things in Jesus' name, too. So she gets on top of him, puts both hands over the hole, and says, Jesus, make him be alive again like in the Matrix, and Jesus does. <laughs> and here's the weirdest part of all of this, right? Other than the, like, reanimation of the corpse, is that he hits the bad guy version of himself with a small rock. Mm-hmm. Somehow he goes down. And then he says, I'm not going to kill him. Oh, right. So he no, he leaves him. Yeah. Yeah. Lightly unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know? <laughs> and then stumbles over to die of a gunshot wound, is reanimated from his gunshot wound, and then they just leave. They just leave. Like, Again, they, they don't even take the fucking gun. Yes. <laughs> like, you actually knocked the guy out before with a big stick, and he still came back and shot you. Why are you going to, like, fool me once? I don't right. understand this reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No, they just leave the abductor guy laying in the woods, armed and very much uncaught. They get back to the car. He says, oh, I'm fine from my 
bullet wound to the chest. Now I'll drive. Don't worry about it. I'm the man. Uh, oh, and then he takes out his fucking cell phone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? He takes out his cell phone. He calls the de- detective. I guess he has like a direct line. Yeah. It's like nine one nine one one, and then the I guess whatever the, the extension. extension. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> he's like. He's like, I found the guy. He's in the woods. Didn't like tie him up or anything. Hopefully he doesn't wake up. You'll find him right there on the trail to the left. Yes. It's the dumbest thing ever. Like in the middle of nowhere, but he, now he can give explicit directions to where they are. And then he's like, we're going to g- just go. And the detective's like, okay, you can just yeah, leave. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Just hit home. It's a hard day. He actually tells the guy, he says, yeah, we left the guy. He's at the first trail on the left. Like, <laughs> the left of what? The left of what? The from first, where? From what? Yes, thank you. <laughs> if you come from the up, you're coming from up, right? <laughs> correct. Sorry, correct. You're coming from up for your correct up left. <laughs> first one. <laughs> So they drive home, which means that we get another driving through the fucking woods montage, you guys. Now, we do see the cops do find him, right? The cops do arrest him. They, he was on the first trail to the left, as it turns out. Him in a cop jacket. Yeah, right. Himself. Arrest himself in a hoodie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she says to him, they're in the car and she says, oh, John. Our God is so good. And I <laughs> yes. thought, writer strike must be over, you guys. This is, primo. <laughs> this is, this is fucking Oscar worthy. <laughs> well, and what's so amazing to me, too, is that he's like, yeah, you know, I may have kicked all the ass and everything, but it was really God that saved you. And I'm like, yeah, now it's humble. The right. <laughs> right. It's very exactly. humble. The movie that you wrote, directed, starred in, <laughs> scored, <laughs> edited. Yes. <sighs> so okay so they get home the daughters show up and we get a big group family hug and now suddenly one of the daughters is the narrator yeah this was weird <laughs> she does like a monologue while they're eating in a diner yeah they go to a fucking Denny's to celebrate she was the narrator the whole time <laughs> <laughs> what that's nothing that means nothing you're thinking of Camus the plague <laughs> Very confusing. Um, uh, no, she, she, and she literally says in her weird narration, she never let it show that anything bad had ever happened to her. Like, great fucking message. Right. Like, sure, she has like horrific PTSD from being brutally kidnapped and beaten, but she never let on that anything bad happened to her. It's real good for her mental health. Right. Well, see, now I got from that. Because she's like, you know, I, I, what I got from that was like, even though mom found out that she had magic healing powers that allowed her to cure uh. bullet wounds to the heart, it didn't change her as a person, though. She was always still the same. <laughs> so. Honey, are you narrating about me right now? <laughs> We're sitting at a Denny's. Eat your ribs. And, then, and they're actually eating the ribs. And I was like, oh, that's clear. That's definitely, they, they ate here for real and they had the leftovers in the baggie yeah. and they used it as a prop, 100%. Oh, wow. And then they wrote off that dinner as, as an expense. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fuck yeah. And then they have a screen at the end. Oh, I love the credits. The screen that they leave up for the longest is a list of their sponsors and it's kind of a long list. So I'm thinking they each gave five bucks. Okay. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. They <laughs> had 20, 20 patrons yeah. today. <laughs> At the $2 level, you get uh, nothing because we can't afford a tote bag have, for that. We don't have anything. So, yeah. Oh, and their kids? Their kids are numbered one and two in the credits, right? Like, I feel like you don't <laughs> just keep go with go with their names or something. Yeah. And then clearly, you guys turned it off, both of you, before we you did. saw yeah. the screen that said, this movie was filmed with a $100 budget and no script. Glory to God. That's the last thing you see. <laughs> and what they expected us to say at the end of that is, wow, they did all of that for 100 bucks. <laughs> but what I wrote was, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking to myself, where did the other $99 go? <laughs> I think it he went to the just website. Snorted that. It's oh, the okay. Website. Yeah. No, because seriously, they put a website for their ministry or whatever, like wcbtv.org mm-hmm. slash right family ministry, WFM. I clicked on it. 
It's a 404 page. Yes. Oh, of it's course it bad. is. Well, this was way back in 2019, Heath. They couldn't keep it up for that yeah. long. No, they they had it on GoDaddy for six months or whatever, and then their $100 ran out. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the film. But don't worry, listeners, we will visit the rights again one day. You will be amazed how quickly they churn these movies out if you haven't watched them. Otherwise, you would kind of just know. <laughs> so, Kara, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. And, you know, just sorry, just in general. Apologies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, quick reminder that if you want to hear more from Kara, uh, you can follow the links on the show notes. No, you, you didn't want to say it's okay or something like that? Huh? <laughs> Felt like I've that was like an to, I love you too to moment and this. you did the opposite? <laughs> no, no. My answer to you is, this is what I've learned over the years. <laughs> you ready? This is my answer to you. Heard. <laughs> So, yep. All right, folks, <laughs> the least you could do after we made this poor woman sit through a goddamn right family from the least you could do is check the show notes and uh, check out Talk Nerdy if you haven't already. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of In Jesus Name, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to light this fire again next week. So, Heath, tell us what's on deck. We're going to be watching The Flight That Disappeared. I'm pretty sure it's an old timey rapture thing kind of like left behind with the flight disappearing because of the rapture <laughs> awesome in the bermuda triangle oh yeah 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 no it's all kind of stuff to look forward to years. <laughs> what all right so with that to look forward to we're gonna bring episode 408 to a merciful close once again a huge thanks to Kara for all her help and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among their ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scanning gave the citation data dnd minus and the skeptic Grind, available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email god awful movies at gmail.com tim robertson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotman from Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostic, I'm an illusionist promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. As part of God's plan, the human trafficking cartel is still going strong in Jesus' name. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Ashley Wright would go on to direct 12 more features, three shorts, and an eight-episode TV series in 2020. That's just I'm 2020. So happy about that. And that's like real, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, real. those are the real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Scout and Cadence Wright had plenty of evidence at their emancipation trial. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. The trial's yeah. just all these movies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Poor jury. <laughs> We're called as character witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and Eli's like, yes. This <laughs> 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 the moment I've been waiting for my whole life. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.